Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here in Louisville, Kentucky, St. Stephen Baptist Church, with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the Master on a daily basis. Thank you for joining me again on this wonderful Friday as we continue our study of the book of Revelation, special book, special blessing, special blessing for those who honor the book, who hear the book, who heed the book. Well, yesterday we talked about uh, how John, who is the author of the book, has gone to heaven and he sees that in heaven, God is on the throne, but God has a book in his hand. And in this book is the book of God's plan and purpose. Christians are suffering because they will not they will not conform to evil. The government wants them to, to capitulate to systems that oppress people. And Christians would not would not submit. So they found themselves persecuted and they were praying, asking God, what are you going to do about this? And so God knew what God was going to do, but no one else did because it was it was a book that was sealed. Jesus goes and he unseals the book. And when he unseals the book, when he takes the book out of the hand of God, the heaven erupts in worship. You read about this in the fourth chapter of Revelation and they say worthy is the lamb. Worthy is the lamb. The word worthy literally means worship. Let's worship the lamb and no one else. Well, uh, I told you how the book of Revelation is broken down. And this book that has the, the, um, the, the, uh, the, the future, the, the, the plan and purposes of God, every time Jesus pulls back a seal, something shoots out of the book, which is a message to the Christians. It is a message to us. Now, this is not to be taken literal. This is all symbolic language. And the seals, all of the seven seals, basically is talking about how human beings ruin the world. That's what it's talking about. And then you have seven angels who blow seven trumpets. And these seven angels who blow seven trumpets are trying to tell us that while the world is ruined by humans, the world is ruled by Satan. That Satan is the puppeteer that's orchestrating what the puppets are doing, that the systems are created by demonic forces that oppress people. This is what this is saying. And every time a trumpet, one of the angels blows a trumpet, then it's highlighting how the world is being ruined by Satan. And let me put it on the screen very quickly so you can see it and you can study this in your leisure because there's no way we can exhaust the book of Revelation in uh, a week <laughs> with a few minutes of, um, of study. Now, I know that some of these lessons have gone rather long, but the good news is that you just take your time and study this at your own leisure. But take notes, stop. The, 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 the podcast, stop it, take notes, rewind it, and get this get, get the facts about the book of Revelation. But here is the outline. Every, there's seven, the seven trumpets. And now I got seven uh, bullet points. And it is, there's a brewing storm. A trumpet is brewing and there's a brewing storm. And, there's, and then a boiling sea, uh, which is the Bible's way of saying that judgment is coming. And then there's a banished star and there's a blackened sky. None of this is to be taken literal. There's a beastly system. The beastly system is the way government is being organized uh, to oppress people, to keep certain people down without opportunities. There's beleaguered shock. And then there's a benevolent sovereign and that is God. And these are the seven, seven trumpets when they're blowing that shows, the seven seals shows how human beings ruin the world, the seven trumpets going to show how uh, Satan rules the world. Now, what do we, which of all these seven trumpets, which one do you think is talking about Satan? Well, it's the banished star. And the banished star is Satan, who is behind it all, Satan. And you read about that. Look at this banished star when the trumpet is blown. The third angel sounded his trumpet. There's seven angels, they sound a trumpet. And a great star, a great star 
Now, when you were younger, you thought, well, the end of the time is going to come and, and, and the meteors are going to fall from the sky and stuff like that. That's because you were taking it literal. You were taking it literal. Just like if I say I, I saw a donkey coming and, over, and defeating an elephant, you don't literally think of a donkey and an elephant. You think of the symbol behind the donkey, which is the Democrats that defeated the Republicans. And a great star is you're not supposed to be taking that literal as, oh, my God, in the last days, this must be the last days because the stars going to fall from the sky. No, that was not the intent. It's coded cryptic language. Please hear me. It's coded cryptic language. My God. So a third angel sounded his trumpet, a great star, that's Satan, blazing like a torch, fell from the sky and on a third of the river. A third is the demons who fell with Satan. And on the spring of water. Now, how do we know this is Satan? He, he, he goes on to say it. Look at Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 through 12. He, he gives us, he explicitly explains what he codedly talked about uh, in uh, uh, chapter 8, verses 10 through 11. He explicitly says it. He said, This is what happened. Let me just give it to you. Let me decode this for you, he's saying. Then the war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels, and we did a series on angels recently. Angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. Now, who is the dragon? Well, let's find out. It's not to be taken literally like it's a regular, a literal dragon, but he was not strong enough, and they lost their place in heaven. This is the fall of Satan. The great, the great dragon was hurled down. The ancient serpent in the Garden of Eden called the devil. Our Satan, who leads the whole world astray. Remember, the world is ruined by man, but it's ruled by Satan, who, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth and his angels with him. Then I heard a lie, I heard a voice in heaven say, now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah for the accuser of our brothers and sisters. One thing Satan was doing in heaven is constantly accusing us, trying to find fault in us. Every time Satan literally speaks in the Bible, he's always speaking a word of condemnation. He spoke in the garden of Eden and said, you can't trust God, uh, 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 Adam and Eve. God's trying to hold something back from you. He, 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 he spoke in the book of Job where God was bragging about Job. And here Satan says, well, good. Yeah, Job serves you. you. You put a hedge around him. You protected him, gave him everything. He's always finding fault. And then he speaks to Jesus in the, in the temptation when Jesus is in the wilderness and said, I know God's, Jesus, God just said you're his, his only begotten son whom you will please. But if you're God's son, if you're God's son, why don't you turn these stones into bread? You had nothing to eat for 40 days, dude. Every time Satan speaks, he's always accusing somebody of doing something mischievous. And notice it says in verse 10, then, then the power and the kingdom of God and the authority of the Messiah for the accuser of the brothers and sisters who accuses them before God are, are day and night and has been hurled down. So what this is talking about is talking about Satan's fall and how Satan is ruling this world. And the way he rules this world is he gets people to ruin the world through policies through policies that oppress people, empire policies versus kingdom policies, which we've already gone over. So this, the book of Revelation, don't forget, is broken up into four sections. And the four sections, remember that the four sections are, are uh, a vision about God, a vision about grace, a vision about government. And the government that God is envisioning is a government of justice, of equity, of fairness. That's the government God is envisioning. Satan is trying to get an empire government in place that oppresses people. And, and in other words, what you see on the streets of Louisville, what you see on the streets of Minneapolis, what you see with all of the protests, it is identical to what was taking place in the first century because of government policies. Men have ruined the system Satan rules the system. The lamb is going to rescue the system. I just gave you three R words. Human beings ruin it. Satan rules it. He's the accuser. But God rescues it. And what we need to know is that God is in control. In fact, two books, Genesis, Revelation, like bookends. If you read the book of Genesis, Here's the C word. The, 
The book of Genesis simply says God creates. That's the theme of Genesis, beginnings. Genesis means beginnings. God creates. But the last book of Revelation is this. The last book, which is the book of Revelation, says or teaches us this. God controls. God is the creator in, book, in the book of Genesis. In the book of Revelation, God is the controller. And regardless of what you are going through, regardless of how strong the opposition is, regardless of how man tries to ruin your life and Satan tries to rule your life, God is the God who can rescue your life because God, who is your creator, who is your genesis, is also your controller in the book of Revelation. And that is what you must remember. And that's why the book of Revelation is always relevant because there will always be governments and oppressors and people who try to hold you down. And there will always be a call to be faithful when you're persecuted. And there's always a need to remember that God is in control and God through Christ Jesus, Christ is worthy of our worship and praise. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you uh, that you are Lord and that while there are those who would seek to ruin our lives and rule our lives, you're the Christ who rescues our life. I thank you, O oh Lord, for your people, and we pray that thy kingdom will come, that the empire, empire laws and empire policies that oppress us, empire laws that do not give us enough money after hard work to take up our family, that those empire laws and policies will be completely eradicated and kingdom policies of justice will be implemented. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Help us to be faithful to you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thank you so very much for being with me. Another powerful point to ponder. Uh, look, if you don't have a church home, we'd love to invite you to become a part of St. Stephen Baptist Church. Contact us here. You can be a digital re disciple regardless of where you are in the world. Contact us New start at ssclive.org. We will get back with you. Thank you for being with me again today. And uh, we'll pick up on this and close this out tomorrow. But until then, don't forget during COVID-19, stay safe, stay sane. And if you can, stay home. I'll see you tomorrow.